Hello and welcome to another Havoc Sons video. What you see before you is a kind of a simple little stereo system made by Sony. Sometimes I go to thrift stores and sometimes I just drive around the neighborhood checking things out. Today, I found this at a garage sale in my neighborhood. Uh, it's got a couple little minor problems. Uh, for instance, it's supposed to have a glass here, uh, but it's a pretty nice little system. Actually, I was quite surprised at the stereo uh, amplifier now this is 19 this came out in 1990 93 right around there the 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 unit that runs the stereo system is an acoustic controlled amplifier the ax301 by sony and when you turn it on it basically controls everything else that you see in the rack So you can pretty much see that the uh, receiver comes on, which is down here, and it's pre-programmed. Then there's a cassette deck, and then there's a five-disc CD-ROM pl uh, player. Now, there, I've already checked it out. I, I don't have a cassette with me handy. They're in storage, because I used to have tons of them. So, uh, no, it's already four o'clock. So I don't know why the lights on this is are not going on. No matter what button I press, nothing happens. I'm just wondering if a cassette needs to go in before it operates. This works, but no matter what, where I put a CD, it doesn't read it. So there's some some damage there. I may have to work on that. But what I found interesting about this unit is the amplifier uh, it actually puts out eight ohms most of the cheaper amplifiers put out four ohms this one puts out eight ohms uh, it is its frequency is from 20 to 20 K which is what the human ear can hear it's rated 110 watts per channel at eight ohms which is nuts that's 220 watts total, so that's a pretty powerful little amplifier, and its total distortion is 0.9%. Uh, so, you know, you know, it's it's not a, it, as quiet as the most professional amplifiers, but it's not real noisy either. Uh, I found that pretty interesting, the specs on this unit. But here's something else that I found that was kind of cool. So basically what you have here is you have the integrated amplifier with a built-in EQ. And from here you can pick video input, tape input, CD input, tuner input, and phono yeah, and it even has a bass boost right there. And then here's a left and right balance. Give you an example of what it sounds like. Go to tuner. Now, as you can see, I didn't even go up halfway. So this... It's surprisingly powerful. Uh, and then the tuner is preset station. So this here is your tuner and your band here is FM, AM, memory scan, auto tuning. So, you know, you just right now I'm on channel five, which is right here. Go to channel four, three, one. So that's kind of cool. So I guess you can preset those. Again, there isn't much I can do with the cassette just yet. Uh, and I, the CD does come on, but it doesn't work. It doesn't read a CD, but I'll check into that shortly. But take a look at this. 
This is pretty cool. I was surprised. Look at that. It actually has a turntable. Uh, as far as turntables go, this is very basic. Doesn't have any great features. It has 33 and 45 RPM. There's supposed to be a 45 adapter there. I don't have it. There's a reject button here, but it does not auto reject, which is interesting. It will fit into this groove and stamp in, or you can rest it here and then bring it up by this arm. It is already pre-set for weight on the stylus. I haven't really ran a record with it yet. I'm not expecting anything terrific, but uh, I thought, why don't I go with one of my favorite testing discs? This here is a realistic sound odyssey. This is direct to disc recording. In other words, they didn't go to tape, <coughs> excuse me, from the orchestra, they went directly to disc and burn directly to disc. So I think when you move it over, yeah, it's gonna go on like that. And then this, oh yeah, soft touch. Yeah. Oh, come on, you can do better than that, Mark. Okay, switching it to phono. Oh, looks like it works. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty intense. Wow, that's absolutely cool. All right, well, I know that works. And I would think if it goes to the end, yeah, we're, see, not gonna get an auto shut off, but you can press this button and look at that. That's so weird that it doesn't just automatically do it. Interesting. Oh, and then it shuts off. Wow, so it does have a auto reject, but it's done by this button, not by the end of the stylus on the record. Very strange, but that's kind of cool. Well, what's interesting is the heaviest and biggest part of this unit is up on top. And as you can see, it's a Sony Audio Rack System SU-S3010. Made in Mexico. And you can see that it's system controlled by these ribbon cables here. And they branch down to each individual unit. About the only one that isn't ribbon controlled is the CD disc player, which is down there. Which, that's fine. Actually, I prefer that it isn't because I'm going to have to take it apart and do a test on it. And then again, the cassette deck, I'm not getting anything out of it. But it could be that it automatically turns on when it senses a cassette. This is like a safety bar that kind of like fits in here. Holds all that tight. So what I found interesting is, do you see how the amplifier protrudes way past everything else the fm tuner am fm tuner the cassette deck are well inside and it's funny the feet on the amplifier are offset to accommodate that oh <laughs> i just found that pretty interesting it looks like we got a little damage here at the top doesn't seem to be affecting anything here 
and then also here. So I like the compact design of this unit and the fact that it has everything in it. I think that's really cool. My research shows that there were speakers that went with it with the same type of finish and they went all the way up to the cabinet. They were 32 inches, which I guess that's what this, the height of this is. I haven't measured it. They did not come with the unit. I find that down underneath, uh, I'm not sure why they didn't just raise it up a little bit so you could store records there. That storage unit down on the bottom, which is this right down here, is kind of useless. I mean, give you an idea here's my hand and definitely cannot I could probably lay a record down in there but you should never stack records like that now the cool thing about this unit was I paid $25 for it oh and it did come with speakers but not the right ones interesting scenario what it came with um which i find also very unusual let me show you look at that it came with the a set of optima looks like i need a little cleaning there <clears throat> this is the optima sts 100 and this is the Optima STS-55. Now, what is more, more common, and this is very rare, uh, the 55 version, the STS-50 is very common. You see it on eBay quite a lot. And they're good-sounding bookshelf speakers. But, uh, but the STS-50s, which are very common, uh, are 4-ohm speakers. These are 8-ohm, which handles basically double the wattage, even if the wattage rating is the same. Basically what I mean by that is, let's say these handle 100 watts at eight ohms. Well, if you have a receiver that's putting out 100 watts at eight ohms, it's a perfect match. But you have a receiver that's putting out 100 watts at four ohms, only 50 watts is really traveling into this through its eight ohm capacity or what's even worse if it was the other way around let's say these were the 50 series the stas 50 which is 4 ohms rated at 100 watts and this is 110 watts per channel you have the capacity of basically blowing the speaker out uh, and the sts 100 is also a 8 ohm speaker i'm not sure if this carries a uh, crossover in it, I don't think it does. I think the later series Optimas do not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that there's no crossover in either one of these. But quite honestly, they're actually uh, underrated for this unit. I believe these um, put out 50 watts at 8 ohms and these put out 40 watts at 8 ohms and of course per channel this puts out 110 watts <clears throat> so you'll see like if I turn up the volume even getting it to halfway they're going to sound very very loud and if I tempt it even more uh, there's a possibility of burning out this the uh, coil on the on the woofer of that speaker so Optimas were considered a really, really good speaker line from Radio Shack. Actually, a few things Radio Shack was, was known for throughout the world. And when I worked at Radio Shack, I knew this to be true because I actually tested it. And that was their speakers. Now, I don't, I'm not sure. There was a variety of different sources that they used. But they always used speakers from a quality company and their specs were extremely high. And you notice that the this one's a paper element for the woofer, and this one is poly. This is two-way. You got your your tweet here, and then probably this is almost like a full range. 
Here, this one is three-way. Uh, your woofer here, your mid here, and uh, it looks like they're the same tweeter. That's interesting. But I would think that there's probably an electrolytic capacitor inside this speaker, and that's all that it's doing to choking the low end to co from coming up here and blowing those out. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's the same for this one, too. Uh, they sound pretty good, though. I mean, I don't really have uh, any distortion with them, but I'm not going to hit them hard. That's right channel. And that's left channel. You can tell the difference in volume. Uh, they... Your 40 ohm speaker is really choking a little bit but hey $25 uh, I was able to get this whole unit and I think I have some glass that that will fit that uh, and I was able to find the sister to this speaker and it's on its way here I don't know what shape it's gonna be I was told that it's in good shape and uh, I only paid $45 for that, and that including shipping, so that's probably about as good as you're going to get of a deal of these speakers. Actually, I remember these speakers going on sale at one time for, I can't remember now, they were half off as everything was, to, went towards a, the late mid and late 90s. I think these were um, uh, originally $100, these here, the STS-100s, and they went to 50 uh, And I'm not sure about the STS-55. All, other, all I know about those is they made very few of those. Most people bought the STS-50s uh, because they didn't really understand what ohms meant and why, it was, why 8 ohms was better than 4 ohms. So here's my little system that I found at a garage sale. For $25. What do you think? <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Pretty nice, I think. I got to grease up my tripod. Boy, that's like moving uh, frozen oil. Well, anyway, thank you for watching my video on my latest find. Like always, have a great day and a better life. See ya.